Hi, Kevin Dempsey, Kevin Dempsey Custom Woodworking Gang. Um, I'm here today to try to explore the myth or the voodoo about cabinet construction. There seems to be a lack of common sense. It's not really that much of a mystery on how cabinets should be made, but there is a, there is a lack of uh, consensus on standards because I'm here to tell you right now there are zero standards that means glue zero uh, construction zero installation zero so we can use it all all we want sometimes in commercial uh, the architects will say okay well you got to use this material or you got to use this in the drawing screws got to be so far you got to put blocking in behind but and then there's, of course, in America, they, they like to use a, a construct, was it Architectural Construction Association, if I'm correct? If I, if I screw it up right down below and correct me, but in Canada, it's an open playing field, so it has no uh, relevance. But it, it is a lot of common sense, and I'm going to use that word over and over again, because I was talking to a gentleman, or I wrote in on, when I was doing my research on YouTube, and he was making cabinets and he used to Craig jig and he went on an angle with the screws and he put a groove in the wood and then put a quarter inch back in. And, I, and man, I said, my God, all the work that's involved in this. I said, I, would, I wouldn't be in business, I'd be out. But his cabinets were not strong. And I asked him, what, why are you using the quarter inch back? And then he went, so it went, uh, you know, it was technical, blah, 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 the construction or whatever. But at the end, he said, because everybody else is doing it. What? Everybody else is doing it. And I said, no, come on. you got to have a better answer than that. And you look around, and it is because everybody else is doing it. The reason, I'm going to let you in on it, the reason why quarter-inch backs went in was really knocked out cabinets in the 90s, Ikea being the biggest player, at that time in the 90s was doing uh, a lot of uh, knockdown furniture and you know they wanted people to assemble it so they they came out with little can jigs and they invented a lot of stuff to really make knockdown furniture great and so at that time a back believe it or not in any cabinet takes up this much room and what do we use a quarter inch that takes up a lot of weight plus shelf space when you put that in cardboard, all of a sudden your cardboard instead of, it'll be about a three quarter of an inch thinner. Plus, you know, uh, you add that up on, I don't know, a skid 20 high, all of a sudden it's a different animal. That's really how it became. And slowly everybody's thinking, well, that's the norm. But the big problem with that is it's the spine of the cabinet for construction. All right. So then, Ikea, I guess Ikea again, I'm not bad-mouthing them, they, they do have affordable cabinets, came up with another way, we'll put a little metal bracket in behind our cabinets to keep them more rigid, so we can put, you know, concrete countertops and solid things. So it's kind of been, we've been kind of chasing our tail on, on this, so that's why a lot of times our cabinets are just so rinkety when you're, you're there. So if you're do-it-yourself or whatever, you don't really, you don't really want to spend time on all that nonsense of setting it up. Just make a more solid cabinet and spend your time on the woodwork. And same with the homeowner, if you're trying to find a custom shop, you're going to be surprised that the difference between a mass produce and a custom cabinet shop are night and day. I know you probably have that image of some old guy teaching a young guy and we're learning this tradition. It couldn't be further from the truth at those shops. Those shops tend to be more cutthroat uh, because the bottom line is, you know, they got a lot of equipment. They got to get that stuff out. And this is a business after all. So, you know, whether you, you like it or not, you have this romantic notion, it, it couldn't be further from truth. So enter this as your business decision Think of the materials, like I'm going to give a quick rundown right now on some of the materials and why they make sense. Now, you've seen a lot of this, MDF, or even heard about it, or whatever. 
not too many people are making inside the cabinets. This stuff weighs a lot. It's, you know, it's just basically sawdust and glue. But the big problem with, with it is, over time, it gets moisture. Like this, I just got off the concrete floor. It's totally ruined here because it, it just drinks the moisture. And then that's it. A lot of guys are doing it now, making wooden doors. In our case, this one is birch right around, but this panel is MDF right here. And I, I chose it on purpose to just get a better paint job. Because sometimes when you use the plywood or, or a solid, sometimes you end up getting telegraph lines because everybody wants the white paint now. It's so perfect. So remember that. Uh, the other one is the doors can be made all one piece MDF, but if you look here at this edge, just having it in a bathroom or anywhere else, uh, you, you roll the dice. I don't know how long it would last. You might say, well, they got a great paint job on there. That doesn't make a difference. Condensation, just go look at a window. Hot and cold, when they meet, meaning a hot shower, it's here. And if this is cooler, we'll create condensation on the inside. And they will swim up, I'll guarantee you that. Then you, we come along and we say, okay, well, let's make our cabinets. We make them out of melamine. Everybody's seen this, and it's probably in, I don't know, maybe 90% of the cabinets, I would imagine. You know, maybe even more. Some could argue a little less. With, this was a godsend to mass producing industry because you, you got a totally finished surface which is a laminate easy to clean uh, you know easy to put together what's really great with the CNC is there's a suction this this stuff when it gets hold look out it never goes flying uh, less downtime on your machinery you name it um, so then the powers that be said well you know what then we use iron on edging we create a machine, so you go buy you know fifty thousand dollar, thirty thousand dollar edger, and this is it. This is what protects your edge of your cabinets. The, the big downside with this stuff, it's kind of like the MDF. You see the openness of the pores right there. Is that that can hold a lot of moisture, meaning like in the summertime when it's really humid, this stuff will drink like a straw. Will go on up. The more moisture, the deeper it'll go. It'll literally just be a straw. I'll guarantee you that that's what'll happen. Then when you turn on your heat, that'll leave. Back and forth, just a cycle. Then after a while, the glue and everything else gets more brittle because it's it's been going back and forth like that cycle, like reclaimed lumber. That's why like sometimes it's just so dry and it can be so brittle, that pine. Same thing happens here. So after a while, the screws can't hold. All right, and if you have it in the ground like this, say you don't have a, a, a ladder base and you just have it like that, then that's, that, 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 if you're washing your floor, the moisture gets in behind and every, everything else, same thing. But the big problem is, is that usually you put a dado here for the kick plate, and then this stuff, it really gets weakened on that. So, you know, just over time, just loses its strength. Mm -hmm. Then there's the pretend stuff. They say, oh, okay, well, they used wood or whatever. I can get this in laminated maple, walnut, you name it, it's like particle board. And then the other big thing, danger, if you want to use the big one, go there, is that you can't really hold that much weight over, over these fans. These things start to sag. Mm -hmm. Then we get into plywood and people think, oh, plywood, well, there's plywood. Exteriors, everybody's seen that. In the cabin industry, this is where it gets really confusing. There's grading, but there isn't grading. Like everybody's all over the place with C1, C2, even people have used shop uh, grading. What does shop plywood mean? I'd like to know, I, don't, I still haven't figured that one out. This is from Columbia Forest Product and they, they're using one, two, three, four, but their cores are soft. 
but they're pretty water resistant. I mean, you won't you won't have too much trouble with it. And they what's called UV coated, which means just put a clear coat over it and protect it. It is a nice material. You know what you want to look for is putting a solid wood edge in, like this on it. See the edge there. You know, stay away from it if you can this stuff because if you look at the edge right here. That's just, that's just veneer, that's soft. It doesn't take much to bang these edges. Once these edges get dinged up uh, on the cabinet, you're pretty much finished, you can't really do it. But if you have solid wood edging, they get banged up. It's so easy even to call somebody, just take a sandpaper and you can redo these edges. And the ultimate, which I don't even know if I can get anymore, Baltic birch. It's also made in Finland, but we all know where the other Baltic birch you know, I made reference to it, and that's Russia. I don't think we'll be getting this for a long time. I hope, uh, you know, I'm not going to get political on that, but this is insane. This stuff's like concrete. I mean, once, once you have, have a cabinet made of this, I made a bunch of them. Uh, I mean, all I can tell you is uh, when you had it made, uh, you don't have to worry too much. What the advantage of what they do is that they're using sheets right across that get laminated all right and they're actually sheets on top of sheets where the columbia is not columbia just has it like it's more soft softer not like mdf but it, at the end of the day it's still it's still soft it's not as it's not as hard as the baltic birch but this you put a screw in this um you know even if you, it's in there. It, your, your doors or anything else are not coming loose. And that's really the difference. And how much extra would it add to the kitchen? When I first opened at this shop 14 years ago, I moved here from Montreal, was I offered $1,400 to do wooden tears. I didn't want to do any more melamine. But here, everybody was doing melamine. And it was about 40% of the people, maybe 60%, said, yeah, I'll go for the extra. The other people didn't. And I, you know, some of them I agree. I agree with some of the reasoning. Some went to flip, uh, some went to shirt. And I totally, I totally get it. I, you know, it's, it's gonna last, like, it, it, don't get me wrong. I don't wanna scare people and I don't wanna like be that, that guy. But, all right. So it's not like going changing a, a dress or changing carpet in the house or flooring. It, it's a major job. So think about that. That's where it comes down to common sense. Uh, should I spend more f for, for the cabinetry? What you will find when you're shopping for a cabinet shop, if somebody can explain this in a common sense approach and let you be the judge at the end of the day, because in the day the, the customer's footing the bill, or if you're a DIY guy and you're saying, you know what? Well, for an extra hundred dollars a sheet, it might be a little less, depends where you are. I know, I know in the States, they love plywood, and they do a lot of it, a lot more than Canada. Canada is so far behind, it's not even funny. But what would you rather work with? Would you rather be working with plywood or this stuff? You know, you're building your own cabinets. I'll tell you one thing, I, I worked with this a few years and done table saw, it just bounces in your face. It's really hard to handle these big sheets, everything else. And this stuff is nice, nice and clean. If you can get your hands on Baltic birch, I'd say phone around suppliers, you probably find some that have 30 sheets, 20 sheets or whatever. If I had money, I'd go around and grab it just, just to have that stock pop. Because the ultimate is, I mean, if you're trying to flip your house, trying to get extra money, if you have a good design, I think it would help. It would, this, is, this is your cabinet, all right? Let's see. How good am I? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Wow. You know what I hurt? It wasn't so much that. The thing snapped back up on my ankle. That's it. All right. All right. Let's see another one. One more time. All right. Let's try this. This is the Columbia. All right. Columbia there. Let's see how I am here. Whoa. Oh, God. Okay, hold on, hold on. I did half the distance here. Okay. I didn't set that up. I really wanted to break it. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, God. Okay, one more. 
off. I, I finally got it. I separated it here a bit. There we are. But I still didn't break it. Right? I still didn't do it. All right. Baltic birch. Oh God, are we ready for this? Here we go. Now, okay, I'm, I'm like nervous of this one, eh? All right, let's. Wow, I'm not, okay, this, this is it. I don't, okay, no, this one's one inch. Okay, so I give, I give up. I'm not even gonna waste my time. The MDF, I'm gonna like to do this one because it's a short piece. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can't do that. That's actually not bad. That's, I know it'll, it'll sag, but it's not as brittle as the melamine, right? But, but it will, it will hold the moisture. So, but it is, it is a lot stronger than this stuff. This is just because the reason why this is dense, it's, it's packed more, it's condensed where this stuff is just loose and flaky. So you know better with that. And, you know, if you try and break this, this is the edging, but we're not gonna do that. Now, last thing. This is our cabinet construction. All right. This was made with three quarter Baltic birch. We use a ladder base. The base will be separate. We'll get that basin screwed in we can run all our wires, tubing, you name it. We can even leave the access in the cabinets of people, electricians, anybody wants access to it. That's the beauty of this system. Solid wood edging, dado construction, which is just a little groove there. I use screws. I like the drywall for this because they got the threads right up there and they're loosely number sixes. They're not number eight. And they, they really pull together and then a full back. The full back gives me the strength for the cabinet. When I say full back, it's a full thickness of three quarter. But this makes it easy for me to screw into the wall. I don't need any hangers or any nonsense like that. Which backs I was telling you about, and I mean, it doesn't take much rocket science to figure it out, like compared to something like this, a full three quarter. Um, and I mean, for me to put this on here and put a groove in this, I mean, that, that's a hell of a lot more work for me. But I have seen in some of the box stores that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them out on this. Or you can look at the big box store and you see white corner and sheet. Like they think, oh, okay, great. I can pop that in my cabinets. What they have on it is a primer. And how did I find out? I was, I was modifying a cabinet and I put a concrete countertop in and I took water to it. And I was, I was, I was nearly, I was like talking about stress. I was taking the paint off and this was slowing up. They, they, used, they used MDF like this for your back. All right? Ask the questions. What is my cabinets made out of? And get it in writing. And if you buy knockdown cabinets and, and you're going to hire carpenters, a lot of times that doesn't work out too well. Because a lot of the carpenters are just learning on the job and the layout's not good. Find yourself a good cabinet maker. That's, that's hands down the best. You know? Spend more time on your woodwork. Great, you know? <coughs> you know, spending time on the woodwork will, you know, <coughs> you, you, you'll become a better craftsman. And you see that we're, I'm the first one to admit it, these are boxes. That's all the cabinets are, are boxes. And don't become a boxologist. Learn to become a craftsman and explore more and figure out how I did this. How did I do this? Why did I go these shapes? It was, like, it was to make the room look longer. And then that, that was it. Um, but a lot of people, now come in and don't realize the work that's involved in here. They come into our shop, say, well, I don't want that, or whatever. They don't realize like how many cuts and everything in there. So get an IQ, you know, build up your IQ, 
find out the complexity of things like that. If guys are coming into your shop, into your house, and they got quarter inch panels like this, and they're slapping it on your island, or slapping doors and, and putting molding to hide it, you know, they, there's a big difference in something made like this. So build your build your I, IQ. The beautiful thing is, I remember when I was trying to learn in the 90s, it was so hard to really find out. You know, you had to order magazines and you really had to do homework. And a lot of times I couldn't go knocking on other guys' doors and say, what are you up to? Uh, but YouTube and on videos, so much is out there. There's really some good cotton makers out there that I would, like, I'm like, wow. You know, and, you know, like Acorn Woodworks, I would be, oh, like, the, as far as I'm concerned, he's a god in my books. Like the work that he did and the craftsmanship. So there are there are guys out there. The other one that the other one that helped me out was Joe Crumbly with his signs. The guy's an artist and amazing with the CNC and the colors and everything else. I, I wish I could just be a fraction that good. So there there are there are craftsmen out there that you can find. All right. Thank you for you, you see here this this you see this type of cabinet construction. You might have seen a face frame, meaning the doors sit on the outside. And face frame tends to be really old fashioned. You know, you look at it and go, oh God, these are old cabinets. And especially if they did up and down or staggered. But in this case, we're doing them like um, inlay style, meaning doors are on the inside. This is a hell of a lot harder to do because I gotta be able, if you look at the gaps, I don't have much forgiveness here, and I can't really hide too much. Overlay, I can hide a little bit, and you know, the, the, everything's all square, but not this. This, we put together as almost like one piece. We did a little touch-up. I left the gap on top here to show that it can be normal, that there, there could be touch-ups there. And I just showed this, this sunk a bit, because we were on a con we were on a concrete slab in the floor, all right. So, but other than that, um, this is what you, you you see inlay, whatever. Here's another one. And come on around here. And you see a lot of this, like in furniture, inlay doors, inlay door. This has just a traditional hinge everything else and you, you you rarely see this in in a cabinetry nobody would really pay for it you know that's why overlay doors are are, are the most are the most popular it's just a little easier to do this is really hard but to show you my age yeah it's true I could have been a model, but I chose cabinet making, all right? Uh, with that said, if I could have done a model like that, I, I would have made my life a lot easier doing cabinet making. Now, when I talk about, somebody mentions the word shop plywood, all right? If they mention, well, we put shop plywood or whatever, you can't get a grading, or even when you go buy your lumber, all right? And you might say, well, it looks good, Run away. <laughs> it's loosely from uh, China, or I don't know if Philippines or anybody else is doing it. One plywood that is gorgeous, so I saw it. In, I don't know why we can't get more of it. I don't know if it's because of can in Chile. They had some gorgeous plywood. Oh, using their exotic woods. I would love to get more of that. Now, let's. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to show you why. So, let's follow me. This was shop plywood that was sold to me unknowingly. I didn't, I didn't know. I wanted some exterior plywood to last outside, and then they sold me this stuff. What it is with the, 
Chinese stuff where we could show you. What they do is they lay their plywood out by hand, like sheets like this, like this, and then they overlap, and then they put like glue. Sometimes they get lucky with the glue, and, and other times no. You know? And it, it's just totally destroyed being outside. And you just, like look, even here, um, you know, I'm gonna try not to stage it, but look, look at here. What they do is they got, they got thin pieces like this, and they try to crisscross. You got grain going one way and the other way, and they literally put it down by hand. It, it must take forever to do it. But the problem with that is compared to the, the other ply, which they're not properly, they're not properly glued. So you can have. I've had it happen on the saw, I've had a nice wide piece, and then it just lifted right off. So I'm not a fan, and I don't even know what kind of glue they're using, not the bad mouth, because they call it shop grade. I've noticed on their website now, because there's a big hole for plywood, because North America is very slow to get it now with Russia out of their picture, they're starting to grade it, starting to go C1, C2, and things like that. They're getting a little better, but th that's why I, I'm leery of shop plywood. And the other thing is, watch out for the stores, because they... Pardon the language, they totally uh, screwed me on this. They sold this as exterior plywood, and it was just garbage uh, Chinese plywood. And thank you for the video.